Hello everyone, it is Joe here from OmniPoke, the channel that brings you guys everything Pokemon. Today I will be bringing you a beginner's guide to the Pokemon trading card game. This is not an introduction in how to play the game itself, but is more so looking at resources that will be helpful to everyone trying to learn the Pokemon TCG and how to improve as players, as well as to become more involved in the community. An introduction on myself, I began playing the Pokemon trading card game back in 2009. I have been playing ever since and I've also become a commentator for the official Pokemon trading card game uh, International Championships and have also commentated multiple national championships back in 2016 onwards. So hopefully I can provide good insight into this field. In this video, I'm going to be answering the following questions. Hopefully this should cover a wide range of questions that you may have, such as where can I learn the rules to the Pokemon trading card game? What Pokemon products should I buy to begin constructing a deck? Where can I buy Pokemon products or singles and which ones are best? How can I search for specific cards to buy for my deck? What's the best way to hone my skills and become better at the Pokemon trading card game? How can I learn from home and uh, improve my skills? How can I find tournaments near me and begin playing in real life? Where can I find recent tournament results, as well as successful deck lists in those events? Where can I find recent Pokemon trading card game news, potentially about new releases of product or recent tournament results again? Where can I read articles to gain insight from high level players? There are multiple available. And where can I watch tournament gameplay itself? Let's start off with learning to play and do bear in mind, I'm going to have all the links in the description down below, so if ever um, you think I'm going too fast, make sure that you are checking the description to see all the links that I have for the things that I discussed today. Also, you can quite easily find these things with generic searches that you can see here. We're just simply on YouTube and we're using the official Pokemon YouTube channel as they have fantastic tutorials on how to play the Pokemon trading card game. They go from the very basics of the anatomy of the card, going through an entire game, talking about how the game is played, how you win, and how to perform attacks and all these other strategies that go into the trading card game itself. Also, you can brush up on the most recent rule book, uh, also on the official website. There is a simple download to it. Now, it is, again, a lot to take in. There's plenty of pages to this rule book, and there are more in-depth uh, rules to keep in mind about sequencing, for example. But these are all things that in time will become second nature as you begin to play the game. Now let's talk about the types of products you can currently buy for the Pokemon TCG. Obviously you all know in the top left corner, booster packs. This is the most common uh, product out there. You can buy booster boxes, which is a set of 36 packs, all with a random chance of getting different cards within a certain subset. For example, you can see the pack here is Rebel Clash, and there are you know, roughly 150 odd cards in an individual set, and you can only pull those cards from within that set. I do not advise buying these types of booster packs because it is all about random chance, and um, there's no real guarantee that you'll start to build a deck. Now, if you are collecting, booster packs are still fine, and if you just wanna have some fun, uh, I'm never gonna question that. But if you are looking to play the game, especially on the budget end, it's going to be much easier to purchase some of these other products as you can see in front of you. Theme decks, just to the right here, I'll try and show you off with my mouse. Um, these have preset number of cards in them and you can actually research exactly what comes in each theme deck product. So you can um, try and piece together a deck based on the cards that you can first find within these theme decks and you can then make some small alterations and improve your deck as you get uh, more cards in your collection or you can buy single cards to improve that specific deck. For example, this is a Necrozma theme deck. Uh, that came out recently. It has a couple interesting cards such as Malamars and a few re uh, reasonable trainer cards. If you were to buy two copies of this theme deck, you would have what's called a playset of Malamar, which is a 4-4 four, four line. That's four Inkes and four Malamars. You'd also have the reasonable attacker of Necrozma. And then you could just have a few tweaks here and there to these uh, to have a very 
um, decent starting deck for any beginner. So these theme decks do not start out great, but sometimes buying a couple copies of them can set you on your way quite nicely as they do provide a good split of Pokemon, trainers and energy cards. All are essential in order to play the Pokemon trading card game. For any new player, I would always advise buying at least one Elite Trainer box because what comes inside, as well as some booster packs, which is always fun, um, is that you get a nice container itself that you can put your deck inside um, for if you are traveling to tournaments or even if just to have uh, lying around the house, you can protect your cards a little bit easier. Also, you get a chunk of energy cards, which is going to give you um, the accessibility to a variety of decks. Also, you get damage counters, which can help in-game play, as well as sleeves that you can put uh, to make a deck. So Elite Trainer Boxes come with some fantastic um, pieces along the way, as well as the booster packs inside to help you physically build a deck. There's plenty of other promotional products out there. You can see there are um, GX boxes and plenty of other um, boxes that come with packs and a promo card. I don't necessarily advise buying these products either because again, they are more weighted towards the promos, which aren't ideal, but sometimes um, the promotional card inside can be worth looking into. For example, this Trevenant and Dust Noir GX was a useful card in both expanded and standard formats, so there's something to bear in mind. Recently, the Pokemon trading card game has brought out some fantastic product for new players. The trainer's toolkit has only just been released and comes with so many handy cards. Um, energy cards, also has rule book, damage counters, and special condition markers. So this is, again, similar to the ETB, a very, very handy thing to pick up. Um, it has very relevant cards that are all still in standard format, so you don't have to worry about rotation for another year. So all the cards inside here will be extremely relevant and powerful for uh, building current decks in the format. Tins, once again, they are similar to these boxes up here. They have a couple packets inside, I think three or four most of the time, and they also come with a promo card. Again, you're really buying the tin for the promo, um, but these are also things to bear in mind because you can get much cheaper versions of cards that you could pull from regular packs as promotional cards. For example, this Zacian V, you could pull this from a pack in the Sword and Shield set, but you could also get this guaranteed from a tin, and then you also get packs inside as well. So it's a nice way to, again, start filling out your collection um, and still having the enjoyment of opening booster packs. League Battle decks are also fantastic ways of building decks. This literally comes with 60 cards, so you could immediately buy a League Battle deck and have a very playable start um, to in-game play. It's got some excellent cards, some powerful Tag Team GX cards, and has, a, once again, a good split of energies, trainers, and Pokemon. I definitely believe these League Battle decks are a huge step up from theme decks because they give you a much better head start in the game. Um, so for me, I would advise buying right now, definitely a trainer's toolkit, definitely one elite trainer box. And if you can get your hands on League Battle decks, probably two copies of either the Pikachu and Zekrom or the Reshiram and Charizard. If you're watching this video in the future, do bear in mind um, that these may be older products and be less relevant. But as of right now, the League Battle decks are fantastic uh, products to purchase. From there, you can always buy single cards. This is always going to be the most cost-effective way um, to build a deck in the Pokemon trading card game. Um, so this is always something to bear in mind. It's not all about cracking packs this entire time. I would say get your handful of useful products and then buy singles of the cards themselves that you require to fill out the rest of the cards needed for your deck. Finally, you can find these products that are World Championship-based products. These are not legal for in-tournament play but are a very cost-effective way of getting uh, literally world's winning deck lists and can give you a good feel for how it is to play the Pokemon trading card game from previous years. Um, so this can be a great insight into how to play. And if you're just looking for some tabletop fun with friends, picking up a deck each and battling it out is a fantastic option for fun. Let's now talk about the best places to buy products and singles. If you're looking to buy products, I believe Amazon and eBay are fine options in addition to these retailers that you can see in the middle here. I wouldn't often advise buying single cards from Amazon. Sometimes you can get away with it in eBay, but if I was looking for singles, I would look more towards the websites shown here. TCG Player gives you some very reasonable uh, price charts and it can show you um, the active price of people selling, which is a fantastic resource. Troll and Toad has a wide inventory of cards 
dating all the way back to the beginning of the game, as does Card Market. Um, this is more for European um, collectors and players, uh, but this is a fantastic resource. Again, you can be buying from players. You can also sell cards that you don't want as well. So definitely a nice resource that also have good price guides. There's always, of course, your local store. These are gonna be obviously easy ways that you can pick up products. And oftentimes they have binders of singles as well that you can also look through. Now that you know uh, sort of where to buy cards and what products you should be looking for, we can start talking about searching for specific cards. The resource pkmncards.com is fantastic and it's been one that I've used for many years. You can simply type in the search bar the name of the Pokemon, which you can see at the top of each Pokemon card, or you can look towards the bottom left or bottom right corners of cards to see the set number and set name. This is a promotional card, so it has a black star and says promo, and then says SM168. That means Sun and Moon Promo 168. A number of other cards will have a set logo as well as a number. For example, it will have one out of 113, and that would then be something you could search in um, those sites like TCG Player, or eBay, as well as the Pokemon name, and you'll quite happily be able to find the set uh, that, that goes alongside. So very easy ways to search these. Not only do you get the picture of the card shown for you, you also get a full breakdown of the information written on the card, um, as well as the TCG player prices as well at times. So definitely a great resource. I love using pkmmcards.com. Again, they have a database going back to the start of the game itself, so a fantastic resource for sure. Now let's talk about the Pokemon trading card game online. This is a resource that I find vital for players who want to start getting a lot of reps in with actually playing games. You'll notice that uh, in more modern booster packs, you will find code cards alongside the physical Pokemon cards themselves. These code cards can be input into this Pokemon Trading Card Game online client, and then you will be able to open virtual booster packs that are different from the pack that you opened in the physical world, uh, but follow the same rules. For example, if you opened a Sword and Shield booster pack, you would have a code for a Sword and Shield booster pack. So you get to double the fun and open another booster pack on your online client and start building a collection on your online accounts. Also, you can use the in-game trading system to trade those booster packs for single cards. Once again, if you are looking to buy or get a, a certain deck, oftentimes trading is a very good policy to get the cards you want. If you're not looking to buy those booster packs or if you have a limited number of them, you can also buy just the code cards alone. And for that, I recommend the Potown store. Um, they simply sell codes and they uh, email them you immediately so you have instant access to those code cards so that's definitely a resource that uh, i have used many times for um, getting my codes once you start putting some of those codes into the system and once you've uh, registered here you can start building your decks and also battling other players online they have multiple different ways to battle they have standard format, expanded format, theme deck format as well. So this client is uh, free to play and they also offer rewards as you uh, play through the game. I would usually advise people to have a small investment of some of those PTCGO codes, either from packets that you open yourself or by buying the codes themselves and inputting them uh, because you won't really be able to jump start and jump into the ladder and start expecting to win games without a small investment. Um, but if you're just looking for the fun aspect and want to give yourself um, a real challenge, you can start off just playing theme deck format games and um, taking the ladder awards and starting to slowly build up your collection from there. I will also put the download link in the description below for the Pokemon tra trading card game online. As you can see, it's for Windows, Mac, and uh, you can also get it on these other uh, versions as well. So definitely something to bear in mind. Again, it's downloaded from the official Pokemon website, so it's all kosher, nothing to worry about there. Now let's talk about going to tournaments. Obviously right now, uh, it's not something that we can do, but uh, when tournaments do start up again, um, you first need a, a player ID, and you can again go through the official Pokemon website. There's a support option here, and you can follow these steps to get a player ID for yourself. Once you have a player ID, you can attend any tournament that you like. And again, the Pokemon website has a fantastic event locator where you can um, 
toggle these options. You can select your um, postal code. You can then um, set a distance for how far away these stores or tournaments are from you. You can also set certain dates. You can specify if you want to play in the trading card game or video game. You can also specify what type of event you would like to play in. Um, so these are all fantastic search options and there are even more options on the advanced search options. And this will give you a string of um, dates and places in order to um, get involved in these events. Oftentimes you will have to email the organizer or do some sort of other registration process. So do bear in mind that, um, but usually it's very easy uh, to get yourself into some of these grassroots tournaments for sure. Now let's talk about uh, recent results and deck lists. This is obviously a great way to catapult yourself into the sort of higher echelons of competitive play because you're literally looking at the most successful decks that are currently um, winning. So the Limitless TCG website, again, link in the description, is a fantastic resource for players. This is a website run literally by a world champion uh, over the last couple of years, and he also has plenty of support from other high-level players. They have a blog, they have rankings of players over the last few years, and they also um, do document tournaments that are completed as well as upcoming, and they have managed to track down the deck lists of the most successful players in the tournament. Simply by uh, clicking on the tournament tab here and uh, selecting the most recent tournament that you like, you could click on this and you'll have the long list of players as well as their position in the tournament, how well, how well they did, and you get to see their entire deck list. Pokemon card decks always are 60 cards, never any less or more. And you can see the entire breakdown here of the Pokemon, the energy and the trainer cards. There's also fantastic tabs here where you can begin to print out proxies, which are basically paper copies of the cards that were played here. If you simply want to sleeve up a deck of proxies without having to purchase the cards themselves to start practicing with the deck, that's certainly an option you can take. You can also export it straight to PTCGO. As I just showed, you can um, download PTCGO. There's a great export option, so you can uh, copy and paste this deck straight into PTCGO for you, as long as you have the cards. And there's also an extra view that can make it easier to read these cards. Simply by hovering over the card, you get to see uh, what cards they are in full, and you can be able to read it. For example, um, in this list, Dragapult VMAX was played in four copies, and you can simply, by hovering over the Dragapult VMAX section, read the card in full. Other than the Limitless TCG website, there are a couple other useful resources. The Complexity Card Gaming Facebook page often has uh, great looking pie charts for the distribution of decks that do well in certain tournaments. For example, this is a snapshot of the Malmo Regional Championships and is breaking down which decks uh, were in the top 32, so the second day of the tournament. Um, so those with uh, very good standing in the first day of competition were able to progress into the second day, and these are the decks that were able to do it. So it gives you a good distribution of the most successful decks at the time. Additionally, poker stats, they oftentimes are very fast to get tournament results in um, from big events and are also worth following. And the link will also be in the description below. For TCG news, Poker Beach for me is the king of news. I have been following Poker Beach again for about a decade and they are very fast to bring us uh, the most up-to-date trading card game content. Also, they have a forums as well as uh, frequent articles here that you can follow. So not only are you getting up-to-date news uh, from this, but you are also able to um, see more of the playing side as well to sort of introduce you to that element of the game. Also, there is again the official Pokemon website that can um, you can simply search for TCG news. Oftentimes this is uh, quite sporadic and it's rare that I would preach um, the non-official stuff over the official website, but I actually believe oftentimes Poker Beach um, is very rapid, especially with Japanese um, translations. Um, so oftentimes this will be ahead of the official website. Uh, there's also Poker Guardian, which is a very reputable uh, news website. For me, Poker Beach is the bread and butter and one that I will search almost every day just to see the updates of the TCG news. For article websites, again, I will preach the Limitless TCG and Poker Beach. 
sites. Again, these are ones that I will be often going to in my daily or weekly Pokemon searches. But in addition to that, Six Prizes has been a very long-standing article website, as has Team Rocket's Hideout. A little bit more modern, but they have a very nice um, system going where you can pay to uh, read certain articles that are premium. But if you're not interested, you can just completely leave it alone. And they also have a number of free articles as well. And a recent one they've done is actually the building blocks of deck building. So that might be one worth watching after this video. Finally, where can you watch events? Well, the Pokemon TCG again has an official Twitch as well as they upload to their official um, Pokemon YouTube channel, recent tournament results, um, and they are streamed by uh, the company themselves. So again, all above board, all uh, commentated by um, people like myself and a few other knowledgeable casters from across the globe. And usually they will look to stream the international championships, the world championships, and a select number of regional championships. So this uh, sort of encompasses um, a good range of players around the globe, as well as real high tier tournaments that have a lot on the line. So definitely worth brushing up on that. Even just watching some of these, even if the format isn't necessarily the same to the current format that we are in right now, it can really give you good insight into how the game is played, what players do, and also thanks to the caster's descriptions, they will hopefully guide you along as the game is played. I hope this was a helpful resource for everyone, and I hope um, this has been a fantastic guide for you to get started in the Pokemon trading card game. If you have any other questions or if there's anything that I missed, certainly do get it down in the comments below. I'm more than happy to answer them. Thanks so much for watching, guys. I hope you enjoyed, and I will see you in another video soon.